Guys, so we're out here in the gorgeous Dubai desert and uh, I'm going to do a lighting demonstration with the uh, gorgeous uh, Yasmin over here in a beautiful Francois Vedem uh, gown. You can see that it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It is terrible in terms of being a natural light shooter. If you are a natural light shooter and you don't really uh, shoot with artificial light, your options are quite limited here. I'm going to go through a whole lot of different options from natural light to uh, on-camera flash to off-camera flash to show you that in one position you can get various results. Okay, so when we first started taking pictures, uh, mainly when we were on film, we were always told that the sun must be behind the photographer's back looking into the model's face. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. We're going to look at that result. And then we're going to go through each step to make the photograph better or different. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is basically take a shot of Yasmin with direct frontal lighting. Okay? That's my, uh, that hand can come in. I'm, I'm only shooting three quarters. Yeah, that's it. I'm looking straight at me. That's good. So keep it like that. And I'm coming a little closer. Okay, chin down a little bit. Clearly she's not so comfortable like that because the sun is shining straight into her eyes. She's looking directly into the sun. The first thing that you can do to fix this image or to make it 20%, 50% better is using a collapsible scrim. I've got Susanna here who's going to come in, my gorgeous assistant. <laughs> she's going to come in over here and essentially what you're doing is you're just going to lift this just above Yasmin's face just to cover her um, hands at the bottom. And if you stand over here, you can see exactly what you're doing. Right, so as you can see now, basically what I've done, I've used this diffusion material to soften the light. It's like a great big softbox now. I'm still on aperture priority. I'm exactly the same settings. No difference whatsoever, okay? It doesn't really matter what's going on over here. All that matters is what's going on inside my viewfinder. Okay, so this is a little bit towards Susanna. So you'll see in that result, you can charge 50% more compared to the first image. And all you're doing is using a very cheap 5-in-1 diffuser. Well, it's a 5-in-1 reflector. You take off the reflective material and you've got a diffuser. Okay? Your next option with, a, with natural available light is to shoot backlit. So instead of me shooting the sun behind me and making it very difficult for her, I'm shooting backlit, so basically I swap places. All right, guys, so if you look at what's going on right now, instead of me shooting with the sun behind me, I'm shooting with the sun in front of me and the sun behind her. So if I look at the image that I've just shot right now, it's the camera's done what it's supposed to do, but because of the heavy backlighting, it looks like a silhouette. There's a couple of things I could do. I could either go to spot metering, or I could go to manual, or on the side of my trigger finger, next to the shutter release button, there is an EV button, exposure value button, plus minus. I press that down, and I can overexpose by probably one stop. Bend your elbow a little bit on the left, your left elbow. Yes, beautiful. That image now has been elevated from a lot of shadows on her body, a lot of shadows to now the mid-tones, but the highlights in the background are now completely blown out. What do I do to bring back some detail? So now what we've got, we've got the collapsible reflector. We're going to come in from up nice and high. Susanna is now pushing in the mid-tones. We didn't have mid-tones, now she's pushing in the mid-tones. Okay, so now I've got Susanna bouncing in some mid-tones. Right, let's go. Beautiful. Nice to meet. So now what's happened is we've got a more balanced image. We've got shadows, we've got mid-tones, we've got highlights. The image is a lot more pleasing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a speed light to punch in the mid-tones. I'm on TTL, which means the camera does everything for me, really. That's great. Beautiful. Basically, as you saw, I take the camera out the box, I put it onto program mode, 
I take the flash out the box, I put it onto TTL, I put it onto the camera and I can shoot. Just like that. Your exposure is going to be perfect. However, anyone can do it. And it looks like direct flash. So how do I get away with that direct flash? I don't want it to be direct flash. I now have a TTL cord. It's the Nikon SC29. That doesn't really matter, but basically it keeps my flash at TTL. And I can either have an assistant hold it or I can hold it away from the camera. So it doesn't look like direct flash. Okay, I have three. Gorgeous. Turn a little bit straighter. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Last one. And so now it doesn't look like direct flash. I've put in a little bit of effort and I've moved it to the side a little bit. So I've got a better shape on her face. But if I wanted to do full length, the Speedlight does have its own uh, limitations. It's a 50 watt second output light. It's not super bright. It wasn't built to overpower the sun. And you can see today we've got a really bright sun. Today I'm using the Elencrom uh, 400, the ELB 400. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in the mid-tones from a big, beautiful light source, 105 octa umbrella with a nice diffuser in the front. Because the camera doesn't know that there's this gorgeous light over here, I am shooting on manual. If I look at the TTL settings here, the, 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 the correct exposure, I'm on two hundredths of a second, F5, uh, sorry, F6.3. So I'm pushing in enough light to fill the mid-tone. So Beautiful. Nice. That gives me a great result. It is balanced for the natural light that is here at the moment. So I've put in enough flash to balance the natural light. If I want to make it look a little bit more surreal, a little bit more fantastical, a little bit more theatrical, I'm going to pump up this power to as much as I can and expose for the flash. So I'm still on 200 shutter speed. My aperture is going to go up to probably f16. Keep it there. Lovely. But the cool thing about the ELB 400 system now is that it works on HS flash as well, on hypersync. So your general off-camera flash, the look and feel that we had three or four years ago, was very much shooting on f16. The background is still in focus. The cool thing now is that I can shoot on eight thousandth of a second and still shoot it on f2.8 and get a really shallow depth of field but still that off-camera flash look. So I'm going to go on to 2.8 and crank it right up to 8,000th of a second and see what that looks like. If it's too dark or too light, I can adjust. I'm on maximum power here, but I can get her closer to the flash or move her further away for a different effect. Shooting directly into the light, the way we were told by our grandparents, ending up with a shot like this in literally 15-20 minutes. I'm giving you a whole range of ways to shoot. You basically need to choose which is the best for your style or your target market.